How are you doing? Doing good. Yeah? Yeah. Did you work at 6 a.m. today? Yes, I did. Yeah, I saw your stream yesterday. I times two it and watched it today so we could talk a little bit. And I, I, you know, I know we're di going to discuss evil, whatever that means. But also, I thought your video was interesting about stalking that isn't really stalking. Yeah, I heard you say that. Um, and I also heard you say that you uh, are so over the whole gender thing, which I think is the solution, mm. by the way. Yeah. But, but. Like the stories you talk about yourself, excuse me, I gotta tickle in my throat. Mm -hmm. Wonder how much this is gonna fuck up this the stream. Not oh, at man. all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the stories that you tell about yourself, like I've did so much similar stuff to you mm. as a fucking young and like mm -hmm. early twenties and shit, but it got received very different. And so that for me is very real mm. distinction. Yeah, because you just turned like, 30. I did. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess. Thank you. I I drop this piece of metal. every. Mm -hmm. I, I touch this piece of metal every stream, and I drop it every stream. So. There you go. Well, tell me, what was it? Because I'm actually curious uh, more than anything to talk about those gender differences. Um, do you feel like when you say you did the same things as me, like run around and had like BDSM threesomes? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> No. Um, so a story that came to mind, you said you just said on your stream that you were working at a grocery store mm -hmm. and you went it's very similar. I, did, I didn't have sex until I was 22, too. Nice. Um, and you were like, all right, it's time for me to have sex. So you went to your coworkers and you're like, OK, I want to find someone to have sex with. Like, does anybody want to have sex? And like, that's the type of like shit that I would do. And uh, but like, I, I didn't do that specifically. What I did was, um, and I went to college, a bit younger than 22, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I asked my uh, people in my dorm, so I, I was really into figure drawing um, mm. and drawing people. Mm -hmm. And so, and I was also like a horny like 20 year old. And I was like, so does anybody want to pose, pose nude for me? Oh man, I need to, I'm going to have some water. Huh? Do it. <clears throat> And I, I just asked around very, like, I wasn't, like, pressuring any, any, anyone to do it at all. Mm -hmm. And I ended up having to go down to the, um, like, like, uh, like, I got, like, a number of complaints about me. That was one of them, I think. Mm -hmm. And then there was, like, some other complaints about me for very benign shit. Um, but when that, a part of that, though, is when I went to college... Mm -hmm. was the peak of the for, first of all it was an art school mm -hmm. and it was the peak of the me too kind of era and i think uh all of these blue-haired feminists were looking through the side of their eye at men mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so everything i did like another thing was i made jokes i was just trying to be like funny and likable and i, I made jokes like i repeated a joke that i had heard on tosh.0 <laughs> about okay. how um how runners have to put lube on their nipples sometimes mm -hmm. because their nipples will chafe. And that's sure. like a real fact, but, mm -hmm. and it's just like a funny factoid. And like, uh, I got, I got told that I was like making people uncomfortable and shit. And I was like horrified. Uh, it was like really a harrowing experience for me. Mm. What do you think it was like, really? Like, I, I really, I really think that it was just, okay, there's a, a lot of things. Um, it was the specific people that I was around. Mm. Um, art school is usually full of socially rejected people. Mm. Um, and they don't know how to fit in yet. And I was in a point where I felt like a social butterfly. Excuse me. And I came off pretty strong. And I was very confident and I was the uh, not they like beat the meekness into me. That's how I feel. Interesting. Yeah. And then I had to beat it out again. How old you how old were you at this time? Around twenty two, you said? Um, no, twenty two 
22 is like when pro probably 22 or 23 is when I had sex for the first time, but this is 19 to 23 ish when I was in college. Okay. So do you, um, okay. I want to ask you like an incredibly blunt question, but it's like, I feel like you can handle the question. Okay. I'm pretty Do, sure what, where you're going. Well, I'm what I'm thinking about is the data and how I would say like why something happens to men versus women. And I will say as like a neurodivergent girl who definitely stands out and isn't a normal girl, I also don't fuck normal people. Like I don't – I'm not attractive to normies. I'm only attractive to like slightly weird people who appear normal but like absolutely are not. And that's why they like me because I'm the girl that they can have the weird things with, do the weird things with, right? Because I'm very like open and stuff. But I will tell you that I wonder how you were perceived even in art school. Were you considered the weird one, even like aesthetically or energetically? Like, were you even weird in art school? Yeah, I was definitely <clears throat> weird in art school and I didn't fit in uh, like anywhere in any of the groups. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I was weird in high school too mm -hmm. um I, but i mean the way that i was weird because because i'm an only child and i mean i think it's like pathological that i i feel the role of a weird of weird what do you what's the um, correlation there it's like i was designed to be weird because you like were older the, 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 no 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 not because i was older be, oh. because because i'm an only child so oh, I, only I feel... child. I thought you said older child. Only no, child. Only, only child. Interesting. And and also maybe some other things related to my childhood, but I feel like I fill the niche of weird. And um, I didn't even dress weird. I didn't even dress weird when I first started, went to art school, and I left art school dressing really weird. Um, I, I became like a femme boy to like fit <laughs> to fit in. Love it. Oh, to fit in. <laughs> Like almost, yeah. Like I start, I started wanting, I wanted to become a woman by the time I got out of there. Damn. Uh, yeah. Why do you have a video of me playing in the background? Is that that'd be funny? It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit funny. I just noticed myself in the background. I was like, I know those hand gestures. <laughs> That's me. That's pretty funny. I will say in high school, I was weird. I was homeschooled until I was 15 and then I went to public school and I was a drama kid right away and I did well in English and did bad in math and I was a weird kid, but I have a weird kid energy that like makes everyone want to talk to me and I think it's because I'm a safe space for the normies. Truly, I really think this is what it is. Everyone will tell me their problems and I just don't overreact normally until they ask me my genuine opinion, which is I, I always struggle with. I will always struggle with this on the internet or in real life when people are say like, Brittany, what do you think I should do with my horrible ex situation? And I'm like, well, this is what you do. Like, I don't freak out when you tell me your weirdness. But if you ask me to take a stance, well, obviously, I think you're weird, bro. Like, let's change that. So I think people feel safe coming to me and telling me these things, but I'm also the weird kid. So even on YouTube, there was a theme for a long time with my audience where I was like everyone's secret YouTuber, where they're like, oh, Brittany, I can't let people know I watch you, but I love your content. It's transformed my life. And it's because when very normal people, like the general public sees this space on the internet, I don't care how many people in the space don't realize it about themselves, I can't even show these, these videos to my normie friends. They, they don't have these conversations. They're not, they're not, yeah we're not late night hosts we're not like digestible to the public we're only niche so when everyone on this side of the internet and even the debate or commentary space is like i have a million followers so i'm normal no you're not you're not when i'm thinking normal i'm thinking about people who aren't even having these conversations in the first place so even my family i've been thinking about my whole family as neurodivergent but not literally but my own family feels so normal to me but in contrast to other normal families we're obviously the oddball we obviously stand out. We're obviously very different. And yet it's always been our strength since we're so individualistic. But I think there's a level to which the weirdness is either an advantage or disadvantage to you. So for me, it's been both. I've literally felt the consequence of it and the reason I'm ahead because of it. Right. I, okay. So so I felt both too. Mm. In high school, it worked very well for me. I was mm -hmm. weird, um, and I, and but I was weird and I fit in with every group. Um, and like, like I, I said in, uh, yesterday, like, uh, like I was asked to prom by like one of the yeah. pop popular, like pretty girls mm -hmm. and 
it's just something about art school at that time that I felt it was just that I was a dude. Mm. And it Yeah, it wasn't I could see that. Good for me. Yeah, the bubble well, the at the time too, like even in the BDSM dungeons and queer spaces, male people became sort of on edge. There was an edgeness to even our communities that were really, really accepting. And men had to perform a certain amount of like progressive energy in order to be sort of seen as like not a threat. And so it, it was even in our progressive communities, because I've been on the internet the whole time. There obviously was it online, but it was it was happening in real life too, because most of them are chronically neurodivergent people who are online as well. Like, again, I mostly just hang out with like, obviously underground groups, because I grew up expecting to be normal and then I was just like I would like to be in these groups the groups that like where I can be myself which is quote unquote and what is normal right it's just like I'm using it generally here it doesn't mean anything but I think that makes sense that you were going through that now the question is does it impact you now that lived experience yeah of course in what way um Well, it was very confusing then, and it messed me up. Mm. But I've learned to be more resilient to that and to be more differentiated, sort of. Uh, hold on. Mm -hmm. I remember... I'm, I'm doing... I'm multitasking at the moment. I remember uh, being uh, in college. I went on a Tinder date, and we went to a poetry slam. Okay. And uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Perfect. <I'm Okay, so I was at a poetry slam, and I remember it was like a big competition poetry slam event, mm -hmm. and it was being judged by the volume of the audience applause for everybody, and there was a bunch of different uh, rainbow. There was a rainbow co coalition of of people um, trying, like like going up and doing their poetry. There like was probably eight participants, mm -hmm. and one of them was a white dude. And the rest weren't. And they were all comparable. They were all pretty decent at slam poetry. Like, but the white dude had way lower of applause. Mm. And when, when they started judging, um, he broke down crying and ran out of the room. Oh my gosh. And <clears throat> uh someone else went out after him, but that stuck with me too. I feel like in these pro progress in those progressive bubble circles, it it just was a really bad time to be a dude. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's the reality. Is like, I I think all things are happening at all times. So no matter who you are, or what you are, it's always bad to be that thing somewhere. So the question is, is like, what's the moment in time of history you're living in? Like, we're all living history, right? And so I'm sitting here thinking, like, okay. What am I and what am I in regards? And am I, am I the bad thing this year or am I the good thing this year? Right. And then it's going to, and well, then where am I? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what, 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 so what I think a lot of men take took from that was that now they are like watching Fresh and Fit or looking up to Andrew Tate. And what I've gone in a different direction where I am like uh, critical of gender and stuff, but mm. I, I don't want to be like I, I I still want equality and I don't want to lean back on old shit I, I, I haven't given up on on being a progressive even though progressives in that moment and get seemed to have given up on me so yeah I mean I think look I'm 
I always say I'm progressive spiritually, but not politically because the, the political groups are about winners and losers and like that's not yeah. helpful. So, but in, in my heart of hearts, in my own marriage, like gender isn't a thing that really comes up here. Like obviously we are aware of it. We're not dumb, but like also when we're talking about who's responsible for what, it's not like you're the man and I'm the woman. Like that's not a conversation that needs to happen in this marriage. And I think that's really hard for people to believe because they'll always believe like, oh, well, you just don't know, Brittany, you actually secretly want this. Or even my mom, who's so well-intentioned, is like, oh, I know you don't want kids right now. You're off it. But like, it's just because you're working so much. And I was like, yeah, as if I don't have like an absolute choice about what I do, right? I've always just done what I've wanted. And so the idea that I'm not having kids right now because I'm working so much and my husband isn't, is sort of like ignoring the fact that I've always done what I've wanted. So don't you think I would just like say like, hey, I want to be a mom now and then do it. Or like, it's not like I'm trapped, right? But the trap is the gender. So if they think, oh, because I think they feel trapped by their gender expectation. They're assuming I'm trapped by mine. But I'm really saying that the idea is like gender never played a role in whether or not I was working or wanted kids. I just as a conscious, like consciousness, asked myself if I wanted to do that, if I want to raise another consciousness. And right now, like, that's not something I'm interested in doing. And it doesn't, gender is not coming into it. What I'm saying is, like, this is about bigger than gender. Raising a person is bigger than gender, or at least should be. But to most people, it's just not, right? It's attached to that gender expectation. I don't want to be any, I think identity in general is something that's forced upon us. And I don't want, some people, annoyingly relish in an identity and mm -hmm. they use that to find a place in the world mm -hmm. and they let that define them and i think that's like an easy way to be um and i think that because of that fact it makes it harder for people who want to be more than than an identity sure like i would say well I would say we always choose the path of least resistance. And so even for me, like I say that I choose the path of least resistance for Brittany, but anyone who did my life would say that it's like pretty hard. I'm just like, it is because like they do default to these identities, which is great. Like I tried very hard to do that myself. And I just didn't fit into a bubble that encompassed all of who I was. Cause I always say there's like eight different Britneys, like the core self of myself has like what do I do? Do I go and hang out with a Syrian Britney or a queer Britney or because like those two groups don't hang out. You know what I mean? So which identity is the most dominant? Is it the female Britney? Well, then like where does my husband fit into that? Or like, oh, what about this Britney? And like this. Brit so I'm just like, OK, where can I be all of the Britneys at once? And it's like, oh, in my own bubble. And then I'll visit everyone else's. Yeah. Your mindset about this is very different from mine, because mm. while I, I completely agree with you um, and, and in my philosophy on like how to approach myself mm -hmm. i don't think about it like that very much it's mm -hmm. just i just that's I, I think about it in terms of what other people are seeing um and i like to think of things in terms of see i feel like you want to do a very progressive thing where you try to, with your own perspective, help everybody be their own special snowflake to like you, you know, like actually like try to, try to, try to do that. But I feel the way I look at things, I like to look at things in terms of systems. And, um, so like family systems is like one like type of like systems thinking like, uh, like how, like a dynamic within your family, but also within society, you can apply the same logic to different social groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, and being a man is like a specific role in in the family, and it doesn't mean anything about you. It means it means the role that you're filling. Mm -hmm. And I, so so I usually my my analysis isn't often taking place on the level of um the individual i'm often thinking about because with the individual i have a very different very selfish way of uh thinking about things i just i'm just trying to figure myself out mm -hmm. 
Is that one or two behavior or what? Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not one behavior. I would say that I don't really engage in systems because when I try to, I don't believe them because I think they're inherently selfish. And I think everyone's in denial of that because we're trying to make the system work for us. That's why we're trying to find a place within the system, which is why you can't have it. You can't have individuals in a system, even though systems are made of individuals. But what you can have is individuals within a system that works for those individuals. And then you bubble hop into different places, right? Like if you're in Dubai, you're not functioning the same way you are in Kentucky, America. Like that's just different, you know, but it's still individuals within a system. And I will say, obviously, I am also a eldest daughter and I am also the second mom and I am also all of these things. And I play roles in people's lives as Brittany in the way that they perceive me. And I have to be aware of that as well, which is why, again, I like need to put down boundaries because people often think I only fulfill that role and they forget there's a whole other side of Brittany that has other things going on. But I will say that I moved away from systems because I wasn't benefiting anybody or those systems. Like I've done activism, I've done canvas work, I've done so much for different places and it just never does anything fulfilling for me. And I will say my channel does hopefully target individuals who want to like learn how to live within the bubbles. But even when I have a caller who's a two and they're like, should I be a four? And I'm like, I don't know, bro. And we talk about it. So that would make them a three. They still decide to be twos and go back into their bubbles because it's more of a vibe. So at the end of the day, like my work is, of course, centered around the individual, but I don't lose the reality that we live in systems. Like, how could I? Yeah, actually, I think that my perspective is all about destroying the systems. Uh. So it's not like I, I'm trying to like like if I was trying to live within it, I'd be, I would be the Andrew Tate guy. I would ah. be the guy. So but I, I but I resent that. I want to destroy that. I don't want to be that. And so like that's I think I, when I like you to me are a very great representative for women because you are like very feminine and stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm foisting I'm foisting on to you like all the shit that you're like, you, you don't you don't need. But but you are also, you know, you're a lot of things that women um, aren't usually expected to be like you're like um, you're like doing intellectual like there's not i don't know there, there's there, there there's just you're, you're carving out your own space you're an individual like you're not just doing like makeup shit or something specifically like for women or something only because i'm not you're... good at it bro i just suck at it bro i wish i could have been a makeup girl i just suck at it but no this is the i do what it's see well, that's i do the part easy. of it that's yeah part of it yeah. though the fact that you have that attitude is part of it and like that like yeah so <laughs> i i just think that engaging with the systems is mm. the best way to undermine them them like i mean i i can maybe not the best way um i don't know i don't know i don't know i haven't thought about this particular clash usually this mm. particular clash i frame in a different context and different type of conversation usually it's because someone's arguing with me and they will use the different um framework so they will say, so I will give a statement that is very personal or very um, like system based. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like the, the classic example for me is the pull yourself up by the bootstraps example. That is true. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps is very good advice on a personal level, mm -hmm. but it undermines the, the discussion on right. like a systemic level, it totally right. undermines it. And they're both very valid, but they mm -hmm. are important in different contexts. And usually I'm just trying to make that distinction altogether because mm -hmm. I do respect both. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where I fall in regards. To, I, I guess I just respect both. Yeah, I mean, I don't I think, know why I'm yeah. so focused. I just, I think I just, I, I just, uh, because of my experience in college and stuff, maybe because of my parents, I, I just have like all this pent up, like, like, uh, resentment towards towards women that's why i like you so much because you break some of those molds and that you know, that's what i want i want that so much. i just want women to to just should to be free i like you know i just i just i like i literally can't get hard unless a woman is like empowered sure. you know i, I like I, I like physiologically need it and so i think that's why i am i am rebelling so mm. You said something in your video yesterday, which I think you said something like, we need to teach women how to say no or, you know, tell these like autistic guys, like, absolutely not, basically. They need it. They need to hear mm -hmm. it. 
Yeah. So I think here's the deal. So I work with like a lot of people on the spectrum, especially some of my male callers. God bless them. They're my favorites. And they do have insane issues with boundaries. And I have to be like, absolutely not. Like I've literally been like, hey, you're doing it right now. And they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, you're doing it right now. Like you're staring at my tits. And they're just like, oh, my God. I was like, this is why you get kicked out of groups. You have problems. And so like I'll talk very bluntly. And we'll talk about philosophy and like, why do you think you're doing this right now? Like, what is your brain doing? And they're like, I don't know. I just noticed your tits. And so I, I, I focus on it. And I was like, <laughs> right. So let's talk about boundaries. And like I've. I've got people who just like, I get it. So the reason I think I can do this work as a woman is because I, first of all, have eight brothers. Okay. And I watched boys try to navigate the dating world. And I watched people sort of myself included, like research and realize like, okay, there's some issues here with expectation of behavior, depending on the bubble. And even in the BDSM community, the weird social guys who would like hug the wall or stare at you at the dungeon or like walk up to you and be like, I really like you. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about boundaries. Look, I will do this because I'm a mom. That's why I do it. I don't do it because I'm a girl. I do it because I'm a mom. Like I'm like, hey, you are my son and I absolutely think this is inappropriate. But that energy is works really well on bottoms and switches. And it doesn't work on men who are like hyped up in the toxic masculinity because they can't allow it. They won't allow, they won't be lectured by a mom because they hate their mothers <laughs> but they I won't allow mom, it you know I, they I, won't I, allow I'm a, it i'm a bottom because i hate my mom ah interesting so you're that one yeah that's a category of bottom there you go <laughs> <laughs> um, you know but no i think ultimately like i don't look i was raised like a boy my dad literally says he raised me to be a boy right and so i recognize that gender difference between like my sister and i i reckon that's why i always say like i'm a boy but i'm not a boy but i'm a boy I get it, but also I'm never going to be, I never will understand what it's like to truly be a dude because I went through the world being perceived as a girl. You yeah. know what I mean? But I do think they need boundaries, but I think, look, ultimately my personality allows me to do this more than anything else. Like at that grocery store where I was like, who wants to have sex with me? There was a boss I had who came to me and she said, Brittany, you need to stop talking about your sex life at work. I was like, where'd you hear me talk about it? I've never talked to you about it. She goes, well, somebody else was talking about your sex life. I was like, well, that's not my problem. And she goes, what do you mean? I was like, well, I wasn't in the room. I never told you it. And she looked at me and she goes, you need to not be sexual at work. I was like, have you ever seen me be sexual at work? She's like, no. And I was like, okay, well, we're done here. Thank you. And I like walked away and I'm like, I'm making like seven bucks an hour. What are you going to yell at me for? Like, and ultimately, look, this personality I have is because I refuse to engage with people that are trying to use the system either against me or to threatening me that I'm going to lose my $7 an hour job. Like, ma'am, please. OK, so ultimately, it's like, what game are you playing? You're playing a game as an individual within the system, but the system is the one you're in. Systems change depending on your location. Games change based off of the bubble you're in. So I just think people need to be more aware of the game they're playing. And also like people need help, but in ways that are, is exhausting. It is exhausting dealing with autistic men who literally won't yeah. understand like you're being socially inept right now. And I'm like, hello. And this is why you're alone at 40. What are you doing? And they're just like, yeah, but like, I feel like people don't accept me. Like even the autist groups will kick these autists out. That's how autistic they are. But it's not their autism. I refuse to believe it's their autism. I do. Yeah, it it's their, it's their belief around their own narrative. They're usually pessimists and they're usually very negative. It's where their autism is directed. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, one thing that you just said stuck out to me. So I'm going to autistically pay attention to that one thing for really. But like you said that it's not because you're a woman. It's because you're a mom. Um, I would like to add something that, to make that better. Like something that a creative writing teacher, a male creative writing teacher told me uh, in high school. He said on Mother's Day, he hates Mother's Day. Um, because men can be moms too. And I, I always liked that. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Are you talking about like the, I, wait, what are you referencing actually? Cause maybe it's I don't a, get it. Just a, something a teacher said. Um, oh. I'm not, I don't, maybe he was referencing something, mm. but, um, I just always took that to, to be, cause when you think of father's day, you think of like power tool, beer, mm whatever and you don't think of like uh, an intimate parent like oh, even even in even inside that's how i took it and I've, I've internalized it like that maybe he was but like even in psychology um i've been listening to people talk um like like uh, people with phds and shit talk about psychology and there is so much stuff about like 
there's a big difference in your development um, between your relationship with your mom and with your dad. And I'm not, I don't think it's like, that's like because you're hard coded to be like that. I think it's genuinely because we just have different relationships with our mom than mm. we do with our dad. And that's like, why? I want to have a good, re- I want to have a really close relationship with my kids. I don't want it to, to be that distant, like guy with the beer in his hand that, that makes, yeah. you know, jokes once in a while. Well, that's what breaking generational curses is about, right? Like even my partner and I, when we talk about whether or not we want to bring a consciousness into the universe or adopt, we're talking about our own parents all the time. It's really not a conversation about us. It's a conversation about our parents. What did we see our parents do? How were our fathers to us? What are some of the disconnects our mothers had? Like what are we going to continue for doing because we saw it mimicked in our childhood? But I do think everyone has a different – like that's – as a girl on OF, trust me, that's the first question I get is like, what's your relationship with your dad? I was like, great, dude. My dad's like my homie. But we're not friends. Like he's still my dad. But like we're very close, probably closer than most people are with their dads. Or like unless you're a girl dad, then you're probably doing the same things, like talking about your period and like who you're dating with your dad. Like that's definitely a conversation I have with my dad. Um, or like if I'm having issues. But at the same time, because there's like a Middle Eastern privacy – wall up I don't have a white dad right like I'm not a white person in that way like I don't have my girlfriends who have like white dads like they have a very different relationship with their dads they're close but they're almost like like they'll call their dad daddy and I'm like okay everyone stop because unless he's spanking you in the bedroom like we're not using that language like I would never call my dad daddy like there's (laughs) no fucking way but like my white girlfriends they they do that and I was like "Mm." See, we're having different relationships. So even in that case, like I would argue that you have to really know where you are in the bubble. It's not about gender. It's about culture. It's about expectation. It's about gender. Yes. But like the way you perceive it and the way you're treated because of it. Like, tell me this. How ironic is this being raised in a home where my parents are like, we raised you to run the business. We raised you as a boy. Also, when are you going to quit your job and be a stay at home mom? And I'm like, which one is it? And they're like, both do both. And I'm like, what? Do both. That's I don't even feminism. Wanna, yeah, I don't. Even, well, no, I don't even look. I don't even want to be a working mom. Like I, ref, I like if I'm a working mom, my husband's 100 percent not getting a career. He's staying home because like one of us is staying home, and it's not gonna be me, even though I work from home. It's not. I'm not the one quitting. I have the career. He has the job. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And the person with the job stays home. The person with the career pursues it. That's kind of how I view it. But like being yeah. raised in a home that was confusing in that way, and it was gender based because even they're confused. Oh, my grandma's worked. The women in my family work. But yet they all say they adhere to like typical gender roles. And I'm like, the women in our families work. What are we playing? What's this game we're playing? Yeah. I think that's going to be a big part of what I'm going to talk about. Like, you're kind of like hyping me up. Uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to fix my bit right and everything. It's going to be great. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but you're like hyping me up for like later. Because like one of the things I, I think that, and I have a much more resent oriented um like a uh, like place that i'm coming from like a mm. shittier place mm-hmm. but it's the same thing i think that feminism you know like it, it, it's such a cliche to say it like this but like but as we have liberated women we're telling them to be everything mm-hmm. and um we're 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 telling them that we're t- we're telling everybody that these things are bad these things that men do are bad but also some of the things that this is where I was coming from. Like some of the things that women do under that system are also bad, but we haven't confronted that. Mm. Like, and some things of those are bad for women. Some of those things are bad for men. And some of those things perpetuate some of the stuff, but we we don't want to focus on that side because we want to empower women and to focus on that feels too shitty. And we don't, we're so conflict avoidant that we don't want to go there because we we're like, okay, we're going to pick a scapegoat and it's going to be the men. And that's all we're willing to talk about right now. And it's uh, it's been a little helpful, but now it's stopped being mm. helpful, in my opinion. Well, we it, have to be critical of women now. That's what we have to do. But remember, like, there's always a new feminist being born who needs to go through the journey, and a new menis- menosphere guy who's being born and has to go through the journey. So it's like it's only bad now because now we're the group of us that are past that needs something different but the group that's still beginning still needs that original path like everyone needs to go through their i hate men i hate women stage and that's a i'm being a little hyperbolic like everyone but like you go through a stage and then you get out of the stage but i will say one of the disadvantages that feminists made and this is why i left the feminist bubble was they forgot like men never had it all men never had it all 
fathers miss out on opportunities to see and raise their children when they are dedicated to work. I'm really lucky. I had my dad every night and every weekend. I had a father that prioritized his family and worked. So I'm really lucky in that way. Like my dad didn't have a job that took him away. My dad would never have done that. He would have always made decisions to make sure he was home. So we knew we had a father growing up, but still I missed out on, I had more time with my mother as we all did, right? Cause she was a stay at home mom for those years. We were homeschooled and you know, so again, like we, I think feminists forget like men never had it all. So this idea like I can be a working mom in a state, like a in, a in a mom and a girl boss. And it's just like men never had that. Even Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, like him or hate him, says like the one thing that was the downfall of his success was he never was with his children. And now he's making it up to them. But he couldn't have been a father and a successful businessman. It just wasn't going to happen. And so I think that's something people aren't paying attention to, which is why I'm critical of people in positions of privilege, like not admitting that they're not spending time with their children. Like we see it. We have like a fatherless culture. Everyone's talking about men need their fathers and modern day men are continually showing they don't want to be present in their kids' lives while complaining that women keep taking their kids away from them. Well, then pick your kids because I don't see you doing that. I see you picking your careers. And then women think that's what I need to do. You need to all stop having kids. Either choose to have a kid and be with that child in some capacity or don't have kids. You're allowed to not have kids. But people do it anyways because yeah. they're like checking a little thing off a box. Boop, kids. I think that we are framing there. Yeah, well, everything you said is right. I think a part of your framing is a bit to toxic. Tell me. Because because the part where <laughs> the men, they want to have their kids, that's the that's the part. That's the good part. But do they want their kids or do they say they want their kids because it sounds good? I think at that point, they really do. Then the action should follow. Then I should see some action. I don't think they understand what it means, but I think they, they want it. It's not they good enough for how. me. They it's don't not know good how. They don't know how. Yeah, but they, don't, they, they, they want it, but they don't know how. Okay, well then listen to the people who are telling you how, but they don't want to listen because they want to come up with it on their own or they don't want to read the books. Well, it's because it's not. No, 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 no. No, you're, you're, this is okay. Now, now here's some resentment from you. Okay, good. Because it's not, it's, it's not that they don't want to listen. I don't think that, I think, I don't think that's true. I think it's because they feel like no one will listen to them. And it, like, like you'll listen, but, but most people really won't. Sure. And they, they feel like they have to be like the Andrew Tate, like, like, like asshole. And, and they don't, there is no motherly figure mm -hmm. that is, a role model for them at all yeah they please keep in mind that do. andrew tate also doesn't tuck his kids into bed and literally says that you should have kids with multiple women around the world and send them child support so even being like andrew tate is the yeah. mistake he doesn't tuck his kids into bed every night yeah so like again it's like people it sounds like this i really want a six pack a six pack a six pack but i'm never going to the gym it's like i don't have time to talk to you has nick i don't has nick cannon talked about like because you know him too like, his, and elon like, musk he he needs to like it, it would be good, good if he would like speak because he know he fucking knows he has to know he's not a good dad and he she seems like he's trying but he can't and it's impossible at this point he has too many fucking kids and it like he, it, he only has so much so much time like it he can't even be a good dad even if he wants to and it's shitty he's 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 stretched in if he if he wants to be a good dad it, it's impossible for him you do the best you can, and that's the problem, right? Is everyone, like, that's fine. Like, humans are going to human, right? So, like, we do the best we can. And the question is, like, if you want to be exceptional, you want to break generational curses, and you want to be thoughtful. Like, again, people will come to me and say, like, Elon Musk is a good dad. I was like, let's define what a good dad is. Like, if we're going off data or statistics or stat, like, whatever we're having the conversation around, like, what is a good dad? For some people, it's a dad who pays your bills. Even though studies show that kids don't care about a paycheck, they wanted the presence of their father, specifically boys. So, again, it's like, what is it being a good dad? All ultimately, doing your best. But your best isn't good enough if you're going to brag about being the exception. So if you're an exceptional dad, you're the dad who's home every night. You're the dad who's there and present in your kid's life. You're the dad that kids confide in and want to tell things to. To be the exceptional dad, you would have to be the dad that is actually someone your kids want to grow old with, trust, see you on your but deathbed. They don't know how. They don't know how. Right. They want that. So they want, they, again, I think a lot of men actually want that. They just don't know what that even looks like. <clears throat> Because when they get it, then they're like, uh, 
uh, diaper. <laughs> they right. don't know what the fuck is going on, but they, they, I think they, in their heart, they want it though. I see I think it. it's not enough to want it. You have to need it and you want to, you have to transform them into a person who gets it. And that includes like, what? Go ahead. I'm just, I'm just saying that because they want it, it means they, they are being failed because nobody's teaching them. They have no role models. They need to. One, one thing actually, they need to be willing to, to look up to women as role models, which is a problem. It is but, the problem. It is a part of the problem. But also, they need to be willing to like. Again, it is about you, the individual. It's not about the systems at that point. At that point, when you say I, you're making an I statement. Now it's not a mm -hmm. we statement. You're saying, how do I become a good father? Okay, what's the game that's being played? What is the system at hand? What is my ethnicity? What is my gender? What is my, you know, my relationship to gender? What is my, what is my income? What is my capabilities, right? So when people say, like, I want to be a good dad, great. So how do you follow through? How do women end up following through better than men in a way? Because there is a societal expectation that kids will end up with the mother. Like even men make that a possibility by leaving their kids. And at the end of the day, if you want to fight for your kids in a way, you have to think about how to do that within the system. And then you have to stop having babies with women that are going to take away your kids. <laughs> and like, so it starts with you. It yeah. all comes down to you. You have to pick the right partners to procreate with. You have to pick the right people to socialize with. And I know what you're saying but you're giving a system solution to an individual problem. No, I'm giving a, a, a I'm not giving a system solution to an individual problem. I'm giving a, a, a system analysis. I'm not, no, no. Cause on an individual level, like um, if I was speaking to, so here's the thing, if I was speaking to an individual, here's the, the I figured out my thing about before. If, if so, your content is speaking to individuals um, and I am generally speaking to systems. Um, sometimes I speak to individuals, but it's it's it it's not neither one is like wrong. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so when I when I talk about systems, who I'm talking to isn't the those men. I'm talking to you. I'm trying to make you understand them. I'm, I'm not trying. I'm not because because if I wanted to t to get through to them, I would not say the same thing. I would say what you're saying actually. But like, well, well, actually, not what you're saying because you, I, I, I like, but like closer. I, I, like, um, I would say I know them better than you do because I know they're not ready to change. I know they don't want it. They don't really want it. They think they want it. Yeah. People who really want it, they change. People who think they want it, they repeat patterns. Actually, well, I guess it's, that depends on how you define it. But in, if you define that, uh, those if you if you go by those terms, I think that people almost never actually really want anything right. because it, I don't think that's true. I think that people actually really want things, but we don't know how. Um, like a lot of people, um, will come into legal trouble or they'll like be the victim of medical malpractice or something fucked up and they don't know how to advocate for themselves mm -hmm. and they just don't they, they become defeated and they want to and they'll try they even try to advocate but they don't know what channels to go through they don't know how to do it they just end up wasting money and time um and they they don't know what they're doing and some people do know what they're doing and the difference between the ability to make those changes in that uh, situation is knowledge yes i agree with you i see knowledge as a tool and it's a tool you have to pick up yourself and yes there are avenues in which it would be very difficult but as, again my bias my bubble as somebody who's like had callers who have come from in completely like impoverished backgrounds, who are on like Section 8 housing um, benefits, who are struggling, they're able for some reason to look at their environment and say like, oh, I could be different from this. The mo They have to have that epiphany. They have to realize like, I can be different than the way that I was raised, which means I can seek out information to change my life, which means who do I call? What do I Google? If you look at my analytics for what my audience Googles to find me, it's like, how do I self-improve? It's literally like Google will tell me like what or YouTube will tell me like what they're Googling. It's like, how do I have introspection or how do I stop crying at night or like how do I stop being depressed? It's like they're literally saying, how do I fix myself? And I think people think, 
how do I fix the world so I can benefit? And it's not about the world. It's about you. So okay, when those. Okay. Mm -hmm. How excited are you about what you had to say? Because <laughs> I, I mean, don't want to. I, I, I hate yeah. being that guy. No. Um, so. So. Yeah. But you, you have to understand that when you Google how to um, fix yourself, like any of those types of things. Um, personally, I don't think you're that bad. But a lot of people that will come up are absolute charlatans. Sure. And, and that's a part of the learning literally... process. You have to find you have oh my to God. no 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 mm -hmm. no no you you can't know because so that's what I'm saying like people um are born into like a family that will teach them how to like advocate for themselves for themselves um like like in that that puts you so far ahead and yes it does what, I'm, the whole the whole time you're saying this I'm thinking about um I'm thinking about like like racial groups yeah. and mm -hmm. and like that are you know like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um it's a big deal i know a lot of like black people who it it's a big deal that neil degrasse tyson is like a visible person to them yeah. like like all relevant was talking about this like to him like it, even though it's funny to say he said he said he said it was it's funny to say, say but seeing neil degrasse tyson like like on tv and shit when he was a kid was like holy shit like i could be a scientist for sure and so so when when these men that that want to like be parents and they look for someone that's a role model and someone that that looks like them and and feels like them that they can feel like they can connect with mm -hmm. what they fucking end up with is fucking fresh and fit mm -hmm. they're not going to find they're not going to go to you cuz cuz they they you they don't think that you can speak to them they don't they, they don't think that they, they don't trust you like they mm -hmm. they can trust someone that that looks or has the aesthetic of sure. like a fresh and fit or something mm -hmm. they 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 need like a but guy that looks like andrew tate but is like yeah like so a different person some go to fresh and fit some go to eckhart toll some go to dr phil some go to this some go to this some go to this there are philosophy groups like you're naming you're naming like men versus women bubbles but what about eckhart toll or even like is. those huh i don't know who that is um he does like philosophy spiritual spiritualism like metaphysics and he's sold like millions and millions and millions of books but he doesn't make it about men versus women so if you're the kind of guy who's googling to be represented by men like in the same way women find me to be represented by women then you are going to fit into the fresh and fit bubble because they are the ones centering gender so if your identity is rooted in your manness and you need a man who understands you you're not going to go to Eckhart Tolle you're going to go to fresh and fit so then you have to go through that journey get what you can out of fresh and fit and then hopefully graduate past that because there's more to the world than that but that's but the problem i think that i think that you're giving people too much agency in oh my god hello in... sir you're the one saying no 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 like hold, uh, hold on <laughs> like what i'm trying to say is okay. i think this is coming down to like like my perception of like free will oh because uh that that's when i say so that's why i was saying like agency i mean in a different way i think i think that people are the product of of their like, like I, I know, and I admit, and mm -hmm. I think it's good that I admit that I have some resent. I also have some resentment towards men, but I have, I mean, because I wanted to become a woman, but I mm -hmm. also, because of that, it's kind of shit. I have a lot of resentment towards women, and I want to be the guy that those guys can go to, and they can come to me, and and then figure out how to not be a fresh and fit. You know what I mean? Like, because that the resentment doesn't just go away. You can't just like say, I'm not gonna pay attention to that because it does exist and it exists because they are experiences and it doesn't you can't just snap your fingers and make it go away yeah so if you're if there are guys who are going to want a more masculine figure you fail so you're gonna in the <laughs> nicest way possible so it's sure. going to be more like isn't it interesting that they don't think the rock is interesting or like mark Wahlberg or like really famous people they want someone more relatable so someone who's like a youtuber so maybe like one of the more like I don't know. I'm trying to think of like, who would it be? Like, who would be a young, masculine, successful person that they could look to that they would identify Nico. with? Who? Sneeko. No, not Habibi Sneeko. Okay. Like, obviously not. He's too pretty. He's not respected. He's too pretty, you know? And I could take him in a fight. So it, it's not going to count. But someone like masculine, like, okay, when my dad was growing <laughs> up, it was Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Like, he would look up to this man in Iraq. They were all bodybuilders looking up to this Even man. Now. Even okay, now. So, yep. But but the thing about Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Rock that is different is The Rock is very um censored or sure. like 
like uh, you know he's very yeah. careful of um, course Arnold, Schwarz Arnold, Schwar Arnold Schwarzenegger is a he's he literally said like shit like he he in that documentary about bodybuilding he said he would go into like he would psyop his competition and get it in their head so that they would like like be self-conscious and like destroy their he would just he would like train with them the yeah. day before of the thing and he's he's talked about fucked up shit he's done and I think that they need role models who are not perfect and pretty like that's why I said it's like Sneeko because he's like kind of shitty like you like you need like you need somebody who is a real human yeah who, who makes you feel like, less like not so bad about yourself right because like you don't want to be yeah, yeah you don't want to you want to feel like you're in the same league or you can see you being and, there and that's why they like fucking trump and andrew tate because those guys are willing to be shitty except they're jag they actually are just shitty you know mm -hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah I think there's a dilemma with like, because I always think about like the kind of women I want. Like, what kind of women do I want to attract? And it's definitely not the typical women, right? I want to, I want to attract very specific women to my content. My majority of my audience is women, obviously, and I'm always thinking about them and like, what can I do for them? And I'm always thinking about them because like, I don't want them to feel alone in the world. So I, I'm happy to like have them have a space here, but they're also an independent person. So they're not even gonna necessarily stay here, which is what's key. I always tell my audience and my callers, you should eventually leave or go do something else or visit, but in a different capacity. The dilemma is like when you have the fresh and fit versions, not everyone actually does anything with it. Some of them just stay in the audience and stay mad. They don't always change their life and move on. Cause like Fresh and Fit's content hasn't changed. It's the same content every day, every year, same questions, same talking points, same everything. And so again, it's like, how do you, you know what I mean? Like how do you get beyond that? You have to actually grow past the person that you're watching on the internet. You have to like, yeah. mm -hmm, like grow out of it. The thing that I wish people could like see, and I want, I, I wish I, I want to help people to be able to see it. Like mm -hmm. if I could, if I could do have that is like Myron, like, like Myron's like, was very smart. Mm. Um, and he, there, he, there's a lot to admire in him as sure. a, like a person. And, and, but when, if you look at him smile, like it, like <laughs> it doesn't look happy. It doesn't actually yeah. I, like, and I don't think like if you if you and he, more than that like the like he, he looks more happy than some of the other like guests that he has on that are like um like red pill coaches like mm. dating coach type guys those guys look fucking miserable like they're in a state of terror and like if you sure you can you can try to game the system and try to like manipulate women or whatever and, and you, you know like and, and you try to like grow sigma grind set or whatever and, and maybe you can do that and and get to that place a lot of their advice is bullshit but be, maybe you could get to that place but you're not you're gonna be horribly miserable you're gonna be so fucking mm. and they nobody sees it well okay so i think most of the world Earn bubbles, live in bubbles, and they actually do pretty fine. The world continues, humans procreate, it's a whole thing. But I don't think many people are joyful. I think there's lots of joyful people, but there's mostly people who are happy in moments and think happiness is the goal when happiness is like an emotion. I would say that these people are happy in moments, but they're lacking joy, which is why it doesn't feel very good to be around them. I see that in Jordan Peterson, who obviously has a lot of happiness, but I really think he lacks joy. He doesn't seem centered in his consciousness. He doesn't seem to be incredibly like, really truly grateful for the way that he he's still mourning like in some his, ways his, his joy seems to come <laughs> from like schadenfreude that's the most joyful he looks when mm. when people are like other people are like uh like when he's like shitting on other people and he's like he's got this smug joy about him it's, yeah that's that, that that's that like shallow happiness that i see in him that i'm like he's not He's not having a real relationship. So again, like people are starving for, uh, Verveke talks about this, like John Verveke talks about the meaning crisis. Like people are having a meaning crisis. It's not feminism that's ruined the world or even the menosphere. It's the meaning crisis. Like what is your meaning? And I don't even mean like, oh, what career do you want? Pass that. Okay, a job is easy. Meaning is secondary. Like meaning is very hard. You know, like getting a career is like pretty, it could be pretty easy for a lot of people. They could still feel me like a lack of meaning. And so my issue is like, how do I give people meaning? And the truth is, is like, I can't. They have to give it to themselves. But what I can do is like, here are all the tools I collected throughout my life. See if one of them work for you, right? That's why when you do a call with me, there's no guarantee it will even help you. There's only a hope that I'll give you a tool you haven't discovered for yourself, which I would argue, I obviously feel like I give. 
based off the feedback of my callers. So I, you know, I consider that a success rate, but I'm not changing. I'm not, I'm not doing the work. You're doing the work. I'm just giving you the tools. I'm literally just the person giving you the tools, but they have to do the work. And I just don't believe people want to. I think most of the world's twos who are happy to live in their bubble and like do what they're doing. When I hear men are lonely, they're not connecting with women and then they blame women. It's like, it's not the women, it's you. Being partners should not even be this important. Because wait, it goes back to your free will. I think if you're evoking free will, you're having a relationship with like your specific consciousness. You're saying, okay, my biology wants to do this. My mental illness wants to do this. My like, this wants to do this. What do I want to do? And then you do that thing. But to evoke free will is very difficult, even for me. Like people have seen me on the internet. I'm like, been here my whole life. So like you can see all the times I'm like, oh, there, I failed there. Oh, did not invoke free will there. Oh, look at how I got mad at this person. I yelled at them because my feelings were hurt. Oh, and I didn't think about what I was doing. I just did it because it felt like I should do it. That's when I say evoking free will. I say like moving past all of the things that are pushing you in a direction and doing the thing that actually is what you either want to do or that's why I'm so lenient on people's actions. As much as people feel judged by me, I'm willing to go like, yeah, you did that because of trauma. I'm giving you a fucking out. I'm giving you an out. I'm not even blaming you. I'm saying you didn't even have a choice in it. And then they'll say like, are you saying I'm a bad person? I'm like, what, what is a bad person? What is that? What is a bad person? Like You're giving them an out, but it's not, okay, look, in my book, it's not good enough. Hmm. It's not good enough. They they Because I still want them to be accountable? You're giving them an out, but you're not, like, so it's it's like... Um, it's like be like, I, I think it's. I hate doing this to myself. I'm not gonna say what I was just gonna say. It's annoying. Okay, I'm annoying myself. It's like being a black kid and there's no Neil deGrasse Tyson and like a white like guy is like, you just gotta be like you can be a scientist or and, and you're like fuck you you know it's it's like you saying that you don't have to, to be defined by these things they 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 need. It's like if you're okay, the better way to say it is if your parents. Hold on. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. um, my frame rate is zero. Ooh. But I'm talking to you. Okay, it's back. Two, if you were watching my stream, I'm going to fix this. Thank you for bearing with me. Okay. It is like. If your parents instill in you that you are worthless or whatever, mm -hmm. and then everybody else tells you you're are, you're not worthless, mm -hmm. you still had a childhood that like pathologically made you feel worthless. Yes. And telling somebody that otherwise isn't just going to make them snap out of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. They need they need a, a a person. They need like to go to. Mr. I feel worthless all the time. Who like they need to go to Mr. Mr. How I stopped feeling worthless. Yes, that's me. That's what I'm saying. It's like saying I want to work out. You have to first choose to be healthy and then do the work to do it. You can't just be healthy because you decided to. You can't just get a six pack, six pack because you decided to. You have to now do the work. The first part is saying I want to be healthy and I want to transform. And then the second part is doing the work, which could take months to years. I am literally okay. living proof of that transformation. And it did not come easy. It took 30 fucking years. I don't agree. I think there's more steps. Of course there's more I, steps. There's always more okay. steps depending on the individual. No, yeah, 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 exactly. So there is, okay, I want to I wanna get thin, okay? And let's say that you are like 350 pounds, okay? So, and you're like, I want to like lose weight, okay? You're probably, there's, it's probably not just going to the gym, no, of course not. It's also the five things I always talk about. You have to do your spiritual health, your physical health, your fiscal health, and then who you are in the anime. And then like you have to do your, your you, you have to do the things that make you a person, physical, spiritual, mental health. Like you think you're just fat because you decided to eat too much. No, that's trauma. What was it? Like nobody wants to be 300 fucking pounds. It's trauma. What is it? Yes. Same with anorexia. You think you got there for funsies? You think you just decided not to eat and deny your biology and evolution? Why the fuck are you not eating, Eugenia Cooney? Obviously, it's trauma. Let's talk about it. And then mental health without philosophy is useless. You can go to a therapist for 20 years and never get better because you never had a foundation to fall, fall back on. Going to therapy is great, but what good is it if you don't know your values, your expectation of morals and ethics, if you don't know why you're existing on the planet? What good is going to therapy without that? OK, 
okay so you need to go you need a okay I, my, my, my stream is back okay i know someone is in my chat look i know your chat doesn't fucking care but so <laughs> I, I know like someone said unwatchable to be honest fuck you okay just do it anyway <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna fix it okay I, I i know this is horrible okay okay the person what they need when when you say you need their your values and shit where does that come from they need somebody who can teach them how to have values yes they they know so those men the, that those men that, okay, zero the universe hates you now it's three thousand when you those say men that want to mm-hmm those men now it's six thousand. But when you say now they need 2, someone to teach them, you know that they that's why they write books. That's why there's documentaries. That's why there's radio shows. That's why there's YouTube. You still have to pick as the consumer who you're learning from. Those people don't just yeah. come into your life. And if you fail, then you just you waste your whole life. No, there's no failure. There's no waste of a life. There's only you living in a moment. There is no wasted life. Well, sh sh that that's true. I, I agree with that. But but it, you, if if you pick the wrong one, you fail at They're the thing. So so let's so those guys that want to be parents, those those guys that want to be parents, they they pick the wrong person, and they will never have fulfilled the thing that they actually wanted to be fulfilled, and they will spend their life compensating for it and and focusing on other things to cover it up and repressing things and maybe a lot of their advice that they will get it will be about repressing and they will get advice that's going to make them more miserable and they're they'll even be attracted to con artists who are gonna like make mm -hmm. them worse on purpose mm -hmm. and... which is why i say you have to go towards your joy and not your happiness because that's temporary a joy is proof in the evidence of your life karma is not you do good you get good karma is what is reflected in what you've done for your life your life reflected back to you so if your life is telling you you fucked up it's still about you you fucked up so you can change the course of your life because of the work you put into it right like it's not your whole life because you've made a mistake it is not your whole life because you have a past it is only your whole life if you continue the moment right i'm i'm i'm, I'm only saying it's your whole life if you actually like die miserable but it is what it is someone has to die miserable it, sure sure it's, it's a part of their story that's their story you're taking i want like, people mm -hmm. i want people to be able to just be fulfilled and it, like Why? so 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 what i know so what i'm saying is these these people that that have like a, a i a, like there's a guy he doesn't have custody of his kids but he just knows from the bottom of his heart he wants to be a dad and he knows he's missing something and he knows that's what it is and he there's a lot of really bad advice that he can get that's going to make him continue to feel that same exact misery and never actualize his his goals he won't learn the right values to to even embody what he wants his desire mm -hmm. and that is not on him for not having the right values it's been he's been misled and 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 i don't i don't i think that you're giving people too much of this free will thing i i feel like we are ping pong balls i disagree i think okay. people i think people like to be ping pong balls i think i let people be who they are like humans are good to human we're gonna do what what is what makes sense to us and like when i look at a family when i look at a sibling who's doing the thing you're saying and i go hey you don't have to do that by the way and they go no no, no i have to do this that's them going through a journey that i can't interrupt because they're doing it. I can't make them do anything more than what they want to do or what they think they have to do. I have I went through a whole, we're just like reactions, reacting to reaction stage in my life. That was my three stage. And then I remember thinking like, okay, how do I stop reacting? And then I went down the practice of like, what is living in the present? Yes. What is evoking free will? But that came from my need. If I didn't do it, Smith, I would have unalived myself. That was the yeah, point. Okay. Most people are not gonna unalive themselves, right? Most people are just going to keep going through life being miserable, which is their journey. So to stop it, they first have to want to stop it. You can't go pluck them out of their journey. They have to first decide they want to change. Then they have the tool gathering stage, which is work. And most people get burnt out and don't want to do it, which is a part of their but, like bubble experience, which is life. Yeah, but yeah, but, um, yeah, but some people get the wrong tools. And what, what I'm yes, saying is- Yes, we all do. You, you act like I didn't get the wrong tools a thousand fucking times. That's sure, what I'm sure. saying. You're not sure, radically but, accepting that it's still, it happens to all of us. I got the what, wrong so tools if, most yeah, of my yeah, but life. What if, 
what if you got the wrong tools and mm-hmm. those wrong tools got you a good paying job? Now okay. you're in a position where you're going to be really confused and it's sure. going to be way harder. Yes. So, I, yeah. So like, it, it's like, it's like, so I think that we are all born like fundamentally, I think we are, to me, it's, it's very clear that we're all born a ping pong ball and this ping pong ball, your parents mold it to fit. Like, so they give you skills or whatever. And some people grow legs and wings mm-hmm. and have so much more freedom yes. um, to exercise what ex- what we can perceive as agency. Yes. And some people have way less freedom and they're still ping pong balls and mm-hmm. they haven't learned those types of things. And a lot of people want to make money off of uh, building a ping pong machine for ping pong balls to go through. Mm-hmm. And I want people to be get to learn the, the skills to not be in that but i don't think that the people that are still ping pong balls you know maybe they're like ones or twos or whatever i i don't think that those people um can aim at that they don't they they don't know what direction they're gonna go when they hit the bumper yeah um so you're explaining what i would call twos Right? Like we're all living in a world and we're born into a bubble and expectation and we all think this is the whole world. We think this is it. Everything that we see and perceive is the only option we have before us because it's what we know. It's the limited information we know. Right? But then the question of the introspection journey is like, are you going to pop a bubble, which you have to desire and question? So that's the fifth thing, right? Like who you are in the story. Who are you in the anime? You have to ask yourself, like, if I watch a cartoon or an anime or a movie, which character am I in the story? Like, which one am I? Am I the guy who never leads his, like, leaves his small town? Am I the guy who, like, abuses his wife? Am I the guy who's, like, an entrepreneur but sad with all my money? You have to ask yourself, okay, like, who am I in the story? And this is a great tool for anyone to have to be introspective and say, oh, shit, I think I'm, I think I'm the angry guy who goes to work and is, like, really self-deprecating. No, right? But that, that doesn't, yeah, sure, but they, they think that's just, look, I, 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 I think we've already established, like, I don't, I think that that doesn't, because the people that, if you, if that in itself is the tool, I know what you're saying, I I know, I I know, but I know what you're saying and you're saying to, to be able to see it clearly where you're like, I'm actually an angry asshole. Right. Um, but a lot of those people, if you put them on that path, um, like they're going to be like, Oh, I'm Goku. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, so so yeah. they if you tell them to think about their story, it's like it's like kind of like what you were just saying. If you just send everybody to therapy um without a vision or without um values to embody with the mm-hmm. therapy, then um they could be just reinforcing like bad shit. Um mm-hmm. like th- that that's totally possible. Um particularly like we that's known to happen with like certain like personality disorders. Yeah. Um like that's and so I agree with you. You're you're telling them to to be able to see it and that's your advice, but I'm saying I, no, I'm but saying that's, that you're doing the thing. I do, agree with how, you. How do they right. learn to how do they do that? see it? Right. Yes. Okay. So again, you can't you can't see something unless you want to see it. This is the hardest part of introspection. People think they're introspective. And they are to a degree enough to survive, enough to land themselves a good job, enough to have a good relationship, enough to like kind of manage life, enough to be depressed. You're introspective enough to know when you're depressed sometimes, right? Like people are introspective. Babies are introspective to an extent. They have an awareness of self, right? It's a hey. spectrum. I know what you're saying. You're saying how. And I'm saying- Wait, you no, can- I, I've, got, I've got a break. Okay, okay, go. I, I'm, okay so, so I've got a different model then for how okay. I view this. So when you say introspective- uh, and that's your 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 spectrum. I'm looking at it more in terms of people who are repressed and people who aren't. And I think that all of them want to with the, all those desires and stuff. Um, those like at, when you're like a little kid, like a lot of those th- that shit is out there, and you you learn to hide it. You get beaten down by the world, and you get you want, and eventually you settle on trying to be Andrew Tate instead of be, like being happy. Um, and because, because you're oppressing like everything you, you're, you're like, well, I, I can't, I can't, uh, like my, my, my wife won't fucking suck my dick, but at least I can make some fucking money or something like that, you know? And, and you, 
it, it, it like it life wears down in you to to where you repress all of these these true desires deep within you and until you're completely blind to what you actually want and uh, so i think the goal is i think that all these people actually want to see it but that want is buried deep within them and the way to help them i don't think they are helpless and they don't actually want it i think that they do want it but they cannot see the forest through the trees why do you think they want it because i think it's repressed i think we're born wanting it why Because I see a lot of people that are really expressive, really thoughtful, um, curious people as teenagers, and then they stop being that. And I don't think it's gone. It's, it gets just buried. You know, I think I empathize with that, but I will say a part of my journey was radically accepting that humans were going to human and that they don't want it because they would have gotten it if they did because people can give them all the tools in the world and they still won't do it. What I instead, and this is my belief, I think we're evolved animals on a planet and we end up in this ecosystem and we have a relationship with that ecosystem and ourselves. And the relationship we have is dictated by biology and expectation and culture and our relationship with our knowledge and how our brains function and whether or not they compute information in whatever capacity they can. I think people have inherent desires based off their biology and intellectual ones based off their introspection. And I think people combine those two things and then end up at whatever stage in life they end up in. So people go on a journey and then they eventually stop somewhere or they don't. But not everyone continues growing. Not everyone continues introspection. Not everyone continues. A lot of people stop, which is why I think most people are twos because they stop eventually and land in this bubble that they think is everything that's ever existed. Like you're going to go on a panel tonight and argue with a bunch of people over gender because they're all in a bubble where they think gender plays a role. That's a construct they've decided on, right? So I look at them and I think, should I come pull them out of their bubble and pop it for them so they can change and be better? Or do I have to accept that they just want to be there? You think destiny wants to be better or do you think destiny wants to be comfortable? You think Max wants to be better or you think Max wants to be comfortable? You think anyone well, wants to be better or everyone wants that's to be comfortable? Thing. Okay, no, so, yes. So that's the thing though. Um, mm -hmm. The part of them that wants to be better is like, so <laughs> when, when I, like they are comfortable because they have learned to repress these things so that they can be comfortable. It's not loud so, enough. I would argue it's not a true desire because it's not a big enough part of them. When that part okay, of them then, that wants to be better our, is big our, enough, they will. But then our disagreement here is really just a a perspective or like, a, 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 but we're seeing the same thing. Yes. But I think, but I, 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 I cry for that part because I see, I, I think that it is, beaten out of us and i uh i think people be, being comfortable um i think we get beaten into that and and the we, we are unable to see it because we're terrified to do anything but that yes yes exactly because fear is the root of all evil and until you face yourself and face your own stagnation which is your fault your responsibility even though you're reacting to the world around you, you will not need to change, which is why I think people choose and get comfortable because it's their easiest path. I could never get comfortable, so I had I to keep going. Okay. I disagree. Well, <laughs> I'm, I piss, I'm, I'm pissing you off. <laughs> no, I'm, you know what it is? It's like Damn. you're on the other side of it. So I'm saying, yeah, you're over here and I'm saying, this is why I say humans are going to human. It's a radical acceptance. It's you saying you cannot do this. You think you can because everyone thinks they're Jesus. And oh, if anyone, just, if people just had the right tools, well, no, try. I don't, no, no. Actually, I, I, I don't think it's like I think I think I have the same outlook about it as you of practicality. But I just, I, I, I am weeping more for them, be, like because sure. Um. 
Yeah, I think okay. that's about you too, though. I I will project myself onto you a little bit and I'll say like, that's the key everyone has to go through, which is to radically accept you cannot control anyone. You have to ex- let them do their life and weep for them all you want, but you're weeping for yourself. You're not weeping for them. You're weeping for yourself. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Right. And but I'm that's saying, what say. get so over when it. When you say, when you say, <laughs> yeah, but, but the part that I just disagreed with that yeah. is because when you said it's, it's that they need to realize that it's them, mm-hmm. that's, I, I strongly disagree. Because I think what they need to realize, and ooh, interesting, <laughs> but what, what they need to realize is actually, so like when they when they go to therapy, if they actually somehow are able, they have, still have a spark left and they are able to fall that spark, um, that they're going to realize that, oh, it's it was my dad. Like that, my dad made me hate, like my dad made me hate. Uh, Your dad didn't do anything. Your dad was a person like you are. And he was living his life, and that the impacted reason, no, no, you. no, because no, because they're gonna, they, you, you have to dissect the reason for the things that you're repressing, and and to to be able to pull them out, you have to find what they're buried under. Yes, to but, find yes, but like you, you can't the until you stop blaming, you cannot heal. It's not about oh my dad did this to me. It's like oh my dad lived a life in which he did these actions and these actions impacted me. But my dad didn't do them to me, even though he hit me. He wasn't doing them to me. He was doing them to himself, because like he produced me or he raised me, and he was having this relationship in the same way. Like when I lash out at people, I'm lashing out at myself, right? A version of fear, a relationship I'm having with my consciousness, sure, right? But when you do that, you're par- parentifying the person because you're saying that they are. Like I think for to to tell somebody to think about their parents in that way, while interesting and it's not worthless to do. I I I think that in the context of dissecting yourself, it's not useful to 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 do that. Um, I I think it's useful to think about why your parents do the things that they do. But when when you're thinking and 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 it's also helpful to analyze yourself. But when you're thinking about why do I hate. Um, why do I hate washing dishes? Because every time I wash dishes, I got beaten. Um, and you right. didn't like for as that's an easy example, like it, right. black, pretty clear. But like, if mm-hmm. you don't even realize that, maybe like you you have some sort of amnesia about it mm-hmm. or something. Like you you don't have to like y- you need to be able to say the cause mm-hmm. of this fear is trauma. Yes, and to say that it's trauma. Like you, I don't think you should. And so if you were to say that the trauma is them, I don't think people should define themselves as trauma. I think that, um, I think that the best scapegoat, the, the gift that this, I, this is something I believe that you might disagree with, but I think that the gift that a parent gives to their child is the gift of being the scapegoat for the child. I really do think that we like, not, not like as a child, but like later in life when you're, when you're, because, because that lets you let go. And I think that's important to do. Because you can't identify with the trauma. It's impossible to not traumatize your kid in some way. Okay? Yeah. Like, in some way, you're going to, like, in some small way. Life and... is life is traumatic. I think yes. the goal yes. is harm reduction, not harm eradication. Right? So, yes. So, so you shouldn't identify with the trauma. So if you're not going to identify with the trauma, you have to identify them with the trauma. Wrong. They... You identify the trauma with the species that is human and the reality that all of us are interacting with one another and we're all hitting each other, which I agree with, but we can stop that momentum. That's why you break generational curses if possible. That's why you stop the generational curse. You don't continue the cycle, but to not continue the cycle, you have to stop the momentum of what you said earlier about being ping pong balls. Stop the momentum. And I know I'm stopping the momentum with my family in a small way, like I'm slowing us down because I'm saying, hey, if we don't like change, we're going to continue this onto the grandkids. And now we see the changes with them. But that took me slowing down and stopping it from happening. And I didn't, I don't need to blame my parents. I think that's a part of it though. You you go through stages of validation. Oh my God, I'm traumatized. Holy shit, I have a personality disorder. Holy shit, my parents are pieces of shit. They gave me this personality disorder. Holy shit, it's not even their fault. They probably have personality disorders. Wait, of course. oh my God, we all have trauma. Oh, wait, we all have trauma? Oh, okay. Everyone's just on a journey. Cool. Everyone's just on a journey. And- but- we came across each other and caused pain, and then we move on with it, right? 
But you've returned to ping pong ball though. A little you bit. say that. But you stop the momentum. So now you're self-aware and you're able to sit in that without blaming, without hating, without, and this is the end of it. You're right. You're focusing on the beginning of the journey and I'm trying to prove there's an end to the journey. So my work has to say, of course, it's a beginning, but there's also an end because most people know how to start people off, but they don't know how to finish it. And I'm saying I finished enough to get you to here where most people aren't. So yes, we're going to start with radical exception. So when I do a call with someone, I say like, what's your thing, bro? Like, what's your, what's your thing? Why'd you call me? That's the first question is like, who are you? Why'd you call me? And I'm then they the usually most enlightened too in the whole world. Who? Me? <laughs> As me, me. Oh, no, you're... no, that's my, my goal is to be the best too. So sure. like I can, I but can see, reach down. A two only can impact the people and all of us can only impact the people that we know and understand. So when you say like, I want to help these people, the question you have to ask yourself is why haven't they helped themselves? And if you think it's just their environment. Is their dad. Okay. Their mom. Cause... Yes, but then what happens when you realize it's not their dad or their mom? It's life itself. Well, the, well, the way I process that is there's nothing you can do about it, and like it, it, it you don't like I like I the the way I process that is you don't identify with the trauma, like kind of like what you're saying, but I just have a different way of organizing it. Yeah. Yeah, I would say like my my I see my comments a little bit and they keep saying like they're doing similar things, but in different ways. And like we are ultimately I'm just saying like for my work specifically, I think people always get stopped at that. They go for validation. I hate men. I hate my parents. I hate women. I hate everyone. These people did it to me. And then they stop there. And I'm saying and go to the other side of it, which is no one's to blame. OK, well, there that's where your needing of the values um is important because it's not it does it doesn't stop there because why do you need to learn about where the trauma comes from mm. because you want to get from a to b yes and you can't just stop oh yeah i'm traumatized you know you, you have to say no i'm, I'm traumatized because mm -hmm. and you realize that you're traumatized because you want to not be traumatized yeah so yes yeah yeah now i will say because i'm a mom i take on the the desire to also end generational curses which is a big fucking deal so when i got therapy and i realized this about my life and my parents i was like hold up let's attach this to philosophy and i was like hold up so my parents are me on a journey they're just people they're not parents like in some magical way they're just me but old okay cool so then I went to my parents and I was like hey I have this thing and they're like you don't have this thing there's no such thing as this thing my kids don't have things and I'm like okay so now I'm dealing with parents who don't believe in things and I'm like how do I communicate what I learned in DBT to them I just did it so when my mom was like I need to talk to you and I was like I'm open but I have boundaries I actually need to go home but I'll talk to you tomorrow when I'm not crying she was like what? And I was like, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow when I'm not crying. And she goes, what do you mean? You're not going to stay here and fight with me? And I was like, no, I'm not. And then I would leave. And that was really hard for us because normally we would stick it out and fight it to the end. And it never got us anywhere. And it wasn't until I started putting down boundaries that I learned in therapy that my mom got better. My dad, got better. all of us got better as a family, even <laughs> if they don't recognize what I've been doing. It shows in the way we're raising our grandkids now. They're, I mean, my nieces and nephews are getting a much better go about it you know what i mean they're getting a much better but yeah. it doesn't mean that like i'm like an amazing savior it means like my family also decided to accept the tools i gave them they actually said okay yeah and my mom the other day goes betty i think i might have anxiety and i was like <laughs> holy fucking shit like that's a big deal for my mom to say i think i might have that and i was like oh my god and like she still doesn't go to therapy but she like took a tool her kids gave her and said mom i think this is called anxiety because i have that and my mom's like what is anxiety like what does that mean you know and when she identifies with it it doesn't define her because she's so afraid conservatives are so afraid of being identified with their illnesses don't don't identify with the cancer you have don't identify with your borderline right maybe like for language purposes it's easier i'm a borderline but don't actually identify with it look at it like this thing that you have to have a relationship with this thing that is just in this moment of time with your consciousness right it's just like a thing that's happening and then have that relationship with it which is what i think you're ultimately saying right it's like basically it's kind of like i think you just look look at it like an like an illness or yeah. like a foreign foreign body almost of course and okay i, I want to ask ask so in in my journey journey uh you know to, to i'm see so from from like a meager like whatever the fuck i am to the great and powerful great <laughs> and is a five Stop. or whatever right no okay <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm being facetious of course you um, are <laughs> okay but so in, in my journey i i feel like i unlock a new 
um, either a connection between things in my childhood or something mm -hmm. or a new like memory and mm -hmm. and how that impacted me. And I will have like epiphanies like that you know, in, in moments in therapy where I'm like, whoa, there's a whole other thing I need to process that I didn't even realize. And I feel like that can be like, and, and then I move past that thing, mm -hmm. but then there's always another one. Yep. And, and cause, cause as something else happens in your life, something else is now confusing that you never knew would even be confusing until that moment. Mm. And then you need to figure it out all over again. And I feel like that's like a lifelong process. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's like, I imagine like a spider web and I'm like slowly taking all the webs and I'm like, oh, there's a new thing. Oh, there's that. And I'm like, it's slow yes. and delicate and it takes my whole life. I'll go through my whole life. Even being married, even being happy, even being like joyful has like, I got my B uh, PTSD triggered last year because um, I was so happy. And I was like, what is this? And I was like, all I was thinking was like this man I've met that I'm in love with. Please, God, don't let him be a rapist. I was like, please, Lord, let him be a good person. Lord, let me tell, like, is this my person? And I was like so excited. But I was like, <gasps> and then I started like hyperventilating in my own chair. I was alone in my room. And I was like, oh, my God, what's happening? And I was like triggering myself. And I was like, stop it. And so I could see myself getting triggered. And I was like, oh, that's so weird. You're so happy. Why the fuck are you triggered? And I was so afraid that I was making the wrong decision, even though I was so sure this was my human. I just like I'm a human. I could make mistakes. And we met so quickly and we courted so quickly and we are family. You know, everything just happens so fast. It's, scary. it's so scary. And now I'm sitting here. I'm going to cry. Oh, my gosh. But like the relationship <laughs> is so good. Our marriage is so good. Life every day is so good that I'm like, holy fuck. Like this is I feel like I found the thing they write about in books where I'm like, oh, my God, I found my thing. My my person like there's many people I could have been my person. But like I found one of the many people and we made mm. a life together. And like there's something so I couldn't have been though the Britney I was a few years ago and found this person. I had to transform. Like I had to become this person to be with this person. And same with him. Like, you know, we're older. We went through a journey. Like he's already done his work. So by the time we met, we could be together. But that I had to transform. Smith, I cannot tell you how toxic I was in my 20s. Like maybe not compared to some people. Like, you know, I never like cheated or beat my partners or something. But I, I was in toxic relationships. I allowed people to like, and it was trauma. It was like childhood. So when you ask yourself why, just know like when you find an answer, there's going to be 10 more whys. <laughs> yeah you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's not it's like and people like when they hear that they they will be dismissive because they'll say that you are defining yourself as those things and, and, and you're constantly like like building a castle of trauma no 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 you're you're taking it apart so you can throw mm -hmm. it away yes and like it, so every time that that happens mm -hmm. you be like um you find like that's where I was saying it's the, the, those those people that have so much buried because every time that that happens, it's like you you found like maybe you um, realize something I realized is I, I have this weird anxiety about singing. Mm. Um, I rapped on last stream, but like that's yeah, different. It's like it, it, it's it's mm -hmm. singing that mm -hmm. is like specifically and other people singing like it, like it makes me feel like how dare you feel like you can do that and like feel confident in something. And going through that process is how you like unlock, like my ability to sing is like something I need to unlock because the thing that's stopping me, um, cause I wasn't always that way. And I, I, I need to like that, that it's not, I'm not trying to, to like throw that over my shoulder as another burden to carry. I'm trying to take that off my shoulder so that I can fucking sing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, you no, unlock I, a new th an ability with it that you've lost. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think that's why it's so difficult because I know when I'm working with people and they'll ask me questions like, "Is it okay that I like I'm a little overwhelmed with the introspection stuff? Can I like take a break?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's a part of the journey, bro. The break is the journey. You're not taking a break. You're like you're not. There's no break. <laughs> you're not taking a break. You're just doing yeah. something different. Like it's all just the moment." Well, that, that's confusing does, though. <laughs> yeah, it is confusing and it is overwhelming. Like I think because people think of introspection as like going to the gym, you're taking a break from the gym, but you're not, you're giving yourself a, a break as a part of the introspection. It's saying like, I'm going to yeah. dignify my spoons or my energy and give myself a moment. You're giving, that's how powerful you are. I've Go got ahead. a perfect, perfect Tell example for a personal experience. Um, for me, a couple times, like uh, a, like, five six hour long masturbation session has been good 
bro. Because, <laughs> like, so, so, like, I have, like, a couple times, like, had, like, erectile dysfunction mm. after, like, a sexual experience. And then, like, then looking at, like, porn, and I'll still, like, have, and then, like, I have to, like, you know, like, and in, in that, that, like, it, like, you, you see, you know, you see that look on your face. I love that. <laughs> but you have you like it, 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 i'm like tr i'm reconnecting with myself when that happens because like if somebody will like um throw dirt on top of something that mm -hmm. is like part of me and then i'm 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 now like looking and, and jerking off and i'm trying to connect back with myself for sure and so like even like a goon in for six hours mm -hmm. could be what you actually need Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Well, I think that's why I found BDSM to be such a good meditation practice because BDSM allowed a space where you could kind of be like metaphysical and spiritual and meditative with the practices of what people just think is like orgasming. Like I, n I never did sexually focused BDSM basically unless I was with a partner who wanted to, but it wasn't then. So when you do a scene in BDSM, you ask yourself like, is this a scene for me or a scene for you or a scene for us? So if it's a scene for Brittany, I focus more on like pain and how I can handle pain but if I'm with a different partner it might be like how long they can be edged or like how long they can do this or like how long so it's like you're challenging yourself right you're saying to my, yourself like how do I have an, a relationship with myself and all these capacities yeah. and like that's what I always want to know because again the big like the greatest mystery is me right like I'm like how do I know myself how do I yes. know myself and so there's always more to know and I see myself like going through transformations where I'm like Okay, I've gone to this point, like being a five is not the end of the journey. Being five was just to say that I'm no longer seeing myself strictly through my identities. That's when I'm a two. So if I talk about politics, okay, I'm back in like queer bubble. I'm back in the feminist bubble. I'm like, what's up? Policies are being enacted to take away our civil rights. How do we get them back? And then I'm like, when I'm done in that bubble, I hop back into five bubble where I'm like, what is a consciousness? What is my fingernail? What is the thing that is me? Like, what is this? What is this? What is this? Like, that's me. That's a different relationship I'm having. I'm having it with me in relation to the universe. Like the bubble, I always say like we're in a bubble of the universe. All of humans live in like the bubble of universe. Because if you like zoom out, like we don't even exist, right? Like if you zoom out, we're not even in vision. Like you can't see us. It's only when we zoom in that all of a sudden I'm a Brittany and you're a Smith and we're having this conversation. Like what is this conversation, right? It only exists because we're having it. but like. It also just like doesn't matter. But it's very exciting and my audience loves it and I love it and I'm like stimulated by it. But it's just like a moment in time. Like when we're 80, do you think you're going to remember this conversation? Yes. Okay. That's going to be interesting. I think I will too, to be fair. But I, and I think I'll still be on YouTube. I do. I think I'm going to be 80 years old. I'm like, what up? Not... <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. We do that to be really interesting. I, there should be, there needs to be more 80 year olds who are like, that would be really interesting. Cause, cause yeah, we don't have enough voices. Cause I want, oh, dude, that would be so helpful to have an 80 year old Brittany Simon mm. or like in, in, you know, it, it, what, Destiny 80, 80 sure. years old. What does, what does he have to say? Yeah. You know, like really, um, well, I mean, there are corners of the internet where I watch, but I do watch a bunch of old people. Like yesterday on my stream, someone goes, do you think you'll be streaming in your 40s? I was like, guys, I'm 40 in five years. Yes, I think I'll be here. Like, what the fuck? Like, I'm going to be here until I, I can't yeah. be here. Like, I think this is too exciting. And I watch so many podcasts with old people. They're like some of the most interesting people, right? Because they have like this whole life they yeah. lived. It's not it's about like... As mm -hmm. long as they're not, they're not too beaten down. That's that's when it gets sad. Well, that's the thing, right? It's like that's important to watch though and be like, okay, do I want to be this old person? What kind of old person do I want to be? I always ask myself that. What kind of old person? I want to be an old person on OF. I want to be an old person walking around naked. I want to yeah. be an old person. Like I already know that about myself. And I I told my husband, I was like, get ready, girl. These saggy titties going to be on the internet forever. And he was like, cool. And I was like, great. Like, awesome. Like, that's important to me because I do think about old Britney and yeah, I want her to be free. <clears throat> there needs to, honestly there, there there needs to be i know bring up back to stupid gender shit but there needs to be women teaching people how an old woman can be hot you know yeah 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 i mean it's true and also like i think you always end up growing and transforming into a new version of yourself so like my when i made my levels they were just there to simplify something that i was experiencing with my co-author like we just had this experience we wanted to like convey to our friends and family and so we conveyed it to our friends and family and then i was like i'm gonna convey into the internet and he was like, okay, I'm out. I'm going to go do my own thing. I was like, bye. And then I conveyed it to the internet. And I was like, anybody else? And now there's always like more to the journey. I just don't need to level it because like, why would I level the rest of the journey? Because to me, it's like leveling it is even leveling it is a two thing. I feel like the levels are a two language to explain this phenomenon. And everything well, after this well, is about transformation. I do. I 
Even so much of shit. You, you, that, okay, so when you say that though, then 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 you're kind of uh, that, <laughs> that you're kind of like saying that because because the levels piss people off. Yeah, I know. But if it pisses them off, that means that they're they're above it too, right? <laughs> no, because no, no. Because no, what I was in, like thinking was, if, if the levels are pissing people off, then they're saying, "No, you're you're trying to box me into a two thought pattern or something." No, they get mad because they don't want to be a two because they think it's bad. They think I'm moralizing two-ness, and I'm saying being a two is fine. It's great. It's good. I'm saying the whole point is like there is no reason to be a five unless you're meant to. It's no reason to be a two unless you're meant. There's no reason to be anything unless it's a part of your journey. I'm saying there. There, there's a way to know yourself. So you use the levels to kind of understand yourself. And then you realize like it doesn't even matter. Like I always say, what's the group? Have you ever heard, if you hear a conversation of a group of fives having the conversation, it's either silence or they sound like twos. There's nothing to talk about. What is there to talk about when you know like we're all just like sitting here on this like little planet doing our thing? Like there's nothing to talk about. Like being a YouTuber is very difficult because again, the reason people watch you is to have conversations where you're arguing for a point so they know where to fit themselves into. Which YouTuber do I identify yeah. with so I know how to think? And I'm saying this... like, what if you just think for you? But they can't. They yeah. need someone to tell them. Just like you said earlier, right? They need the person to tell them, like the tool. Yeah, they need a model. They need a model. And I'm saying my model is saying you can be whatever you want, which is too much for people to handle because now they're responsible for being whatever they want. And then the thing they end up being, they say, this isn't what I wanted. And I was like, but isn't it? Because you ended up yeah. there. If this was a private conversation, we wouldn't be talking the same way at all. Probably not. Well, it'd be sort of similar, but different. There'd be like a 10% difference. On I would my be end. way less, I would, I would be like way less passionate about a lot of things too. Probably. <clears throat> Though I do get passionate already. I'm Middle Eastern. <laughs> like I, I probably would get loud anyways. Yeah. But I talk more bluntly. Like I'd give you, I'd probably give you more personal examples or I'd reference YouTubers in a much more different way. And I'd talk about them because I'm aware like they could be watching or they could be clipping this or like their viewers could be clipping this. But if we were in private, I'd probably be like, okay, you remember when this happened on the internet? Let me tell you. So this was happening here and this was happening this way. Not things that are well, secrets, but things we could talk about it differently. Well, what I, what I mean is like we would... Um, like th I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I'm talking to you because like talking to somebody as a YouTuber is cause it's interesting, but it's not because I'm trying to, like, I didn't come to talk to you because I wanted to figure something out or learn something. I'm coming to talk to you because I want to make content. Yeah. So what mm -hmm. is, what, what the fuck is it? Is, is, I'm doing is a little the, bit of both, right? I want to talk to you, but also I'm like, cool, content, collabs course. are great for views. This is awesome. But it, it gets internalized and we feel it, right? So like we get excited by it. And, and like, so, so the, the actual con uh, the, like the actual content of the conversation is interesting and it's exciting and it's, ex it's, it's exploring in a different way that you normally wouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's really an interesting thing. Uh, it's an interesting perspective. It, it almost is a third person perspective um, to... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I think that's if why I was, mm -hmm, go ahead, go ahead. If, if this is in private, I would, I would have end a lot more thoughts and that's interesting and then not go more into it because I don't have any reason to explain it. Mm. The only reason I'm explaining it, you know, because it's not like I yeah. need to prove something to you. So yeah, I'm talking, okay, my partner asked me this the other day. He goes, when you're talking to people, are you talking to the people you're talking to or are you talking to the audience? And I was like, both. So when I talk to Tom or you or anyone else, I'm also talking to my audience. And sometimes this is a problem I run into because I feel like YouTubers don't actually talk to Britney. They're also talking to their audience or their ideas. I also don't talk to them sometimes. Sometimes I'm talking to my audience through them. Like I'm using, like my audience will say, oh, Brittany, your thoughts become much more clear when you're up against somebody who disagrees with you. Now we get it more. And I'm like, cool, I'll use more people to explain myself to my audience or my ideas. But I don't even care, oh, this sounds bad, if the content creator I'm talking to is like, gets me. I just care if my audience gets me better because the content creator is there to use as a sounding board. But I also know that they're doing that to me because of the way they box me. So it's like, okay, like it's, it feels mutually beneficial to us to do that. Yeah. Uh, I often find that I, uh, if I'm talking without a sounding board, mm. 
it's like I, 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 it's, it's like uh, I'm embarrassed about it, but I need someone else to start talking so that I can remember more of my thoughts. And as soon sure. as the other person starts talking, I'm like, oh, now I remember. Okay, shut the fuck up because I want to know what I wanted to say. Yeah. yeah. Sounds a little ADHD of you or like something. Oh, but like, very yeah. ADHD. Yeah. That's yeah. What it is, <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes that, sense. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. identifying that so I can feel better. There yeah. you go. <laughs> like, there you go. Well, I will say too, and I've also, I'm also aware that you have a panel after me. And I'm like, okay, I wonder how much longer he's going to want to talk. And like, oh, is there anything I want to say to him? And like all of that stuff. I, I, one thing I'm passionate about that I've had this thought multiple times that came up earlier and because you're like the type that is like t can t talk about this type of thing. I really I, I honestly feel like I want to like write a book or a like or make a series or something about um, using masturbation to recover from erectile dysfunction. Sure. Because um, when you said like challenging yourself, like the what you, what you have to do what you got to do like in, in short is mm -hmm. you got to like use bare minimum stimulation in as many creative ways as you possibly can and figure and and and, and bare minimum stim stimulation like visually or like what you're reading and bare minimum and figure out exactly what it is that you care about because because mm. do you actually know what it is that's actually happening that makes you aroused mm. and what like what about the situation is making you aroused because I'm a lot, I feel like most guys don't actually know and they take it for granted and then it goes away and they're like, what's going on? You don't know yeah. what's going You never knew what was going on. You have to mm -hmm. figure it out. And uh, yeah. 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 I think um, like I uh, again, like using like BDSM dynamics or even like the relationship. Again, I always think like, what does this mean? Like, why am I even into this? Like, why am I into this kink or why am I into this thing? Or like, what is happening? One weird thing I discovered about myself, which I was thinking about yesterday because I was masturbating and I was thinking about this thing. I get turned on by me. Mas I think I fantasize about me getting things done. <laughs> getting things done. So but like I masturbate yeah. about like, yeah, I think about myself like working out or getting videos edited and I'm like, get, I get turned on by a couple accomplishment, like a, I think. Like a Quaker almost, like channeling your sexual energy into like, like, so like the Quakers were known for making great furniture. Really? And okay, also well, like, there you go. Okay. Yeah, so, so like they would chant, they, they wouldn't have sex. So they, they would channel it into their like Oh, nice. Okay. So, okay. There you go. Kind of. Yeah, kind of, I guess. But like, yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I remember one time I was watching The Big Short. Have you seen that movie? It's about the 08 crash. And I was like getting turned on by the movie. And my partner at the time was like, are you getting horny? I was like, there's something about the 08 crash that really just gets me going. And he's like, what is it? I was like, I was, I was, I graduated high school. I was starting my like working career. I was like, why didn't I buy a house at 12 years old? I was like, oh my gosh. And like something about people predicting like economic crashes just makes me turned on. I think it's like the idea of like getting ahead in the game or something about this. Why I'm an entrepreneur, right? It's something about like, Ooh, what game are we playing that gets me going? But like, it's not, that's what I mean. Like even masturbating to me, I don't know if it's even sexual at that point, or is it just like neutral? Is it like, that's something that I always wonder about myself. Like why is masturbating about getting things done so hot? Or why is that fantasy so hot? Like getting things done. And that's always like, you know, I just assume but, it goes along with my whole. What I've discovered about myself is the, I, what I need is for I, I need to know that my partner, um, my pleasure, they want me to have pleasure, not just for them. Mm. Like, and knowing that is really hard. And I think a lot of time with women, it, it is hard to find and like confusing because yeah, a lot of women feel exactly the same way. And so like women feel like they have to like make him come in order to feel gratified. And if that's what they want, then that undermines my ability to know that they are caretaking me in a way that's like either not selfish or that like, like I need to mm -hmm. just feel like, like it's like, I need, yeah, it's, it, it needs some type of acknowledgement of my sexuality that is like loving that isn't, for them you know yeah it's and uh that's what i've learned about myself yeah i mean ultimately and that's I... why i need a goon that's why i need a goon sometimes because sometimes i i experience the opposite and then i need to reconnect with fe imagining that that i'm getting that and what that feels like Mm. I will say this makes me like th my brain correlates it all back to like intimacy and that's why introspection is so uncomfortable because it's intimacy with intimacy with the self it's why we do masturbate to like 
shut our brains off or we play video games or we do all these things because I think it's like a form of intimacy that's scary. Like I always look at video games for some men as um, like self-care. But I think sometimes like like women, we self-care into destruction because we're not actually like being present in the self-care. And I think it's because we don't want to be present with the intimacy of the self. Like most people don't want to have a relationship with themselves. So what they do is they volunteer and help other people. They become therapists and help other people. They become coaches and help other people. They dedicate their life to volunteering and talking about how we have to help, help society because they don't want to actually have a relationship with themselves. It's easier to help other people than yourself. And so I'm just like, I want to encourage people to be more intimate with themselves, even if it's uncomfortable, because like, I don't think even a lot of men are even given, like women definitely have more avenues for that, I think, than men, from my understanding. I've got a question that I've been wondering about you um, along those lines, mm -hmm. like a really big question for me. Um, so because it's a, because it's a question about me, but so like, I, cause I've noted for me, my content is about me figuring myself out do you have is are you making content also to help you cuz like like i was saying earlier like how talking to you is like a different way to have a perspective on a conversation that allows a lot of different avenues and perspective um are you using your content to grow as an individual oh yeah definitely since yeah always like i think since the moment i started posting it was always it's always about me right like <laughs> It sounds like such a narcissist, but it's always about me. It's about, well, my joy is like my curiosity and my curiosity is in the self and my curiosity knows I need other people to refer to the self. And so this is like a great opportunity for me to know myself. My whole life has been a dedication of me finding myself since I was like eight years old. Like, who am I? Who's Brittany? Because everyone keeps telling me who I am. And everyone is just a little bit wrong in a way that I'm like not comfortable with. So who, how do I understand myself? I start with myself, I refer to others, and then I go back to myself with the data. So I'm just like constantly collecting information about myself. Some people give me really interesting feedback and that's fascinating. And sometimes I think it's right, but it's always somewhat wrong or totally wrong. But yeah, this content is for me and it's for people who are in my category of person. Realistically, if you're like me, you are also wanting to know about you and that's what yeah, i want to help because you're modeling out. you're modeling right. that yes right and it's not narcissistic in a bad way because a lot of people will say like you dedicating your life to yourself like that's so narcissistic i was like yeah but i i will tell you this right now everyone seems very unhappy dedicating themselves to other people which is why i say the road to hell is paved in good intentions that's a good saying because you dedicate your life to helping quote unquote other people and you just cause more destruction i wish people would help me less I, I need to make a distinction here with narcissism. Yeah. That there is uh, absolutely a recognized thing like uh, healthy narcissism and yeah, recognized sure. health, healthy sociopathy even. Mm, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. the, the, and when narcissism is unhealthy is when it's like a deeply so like all all people who are leaders have to have a high degree of narcissism. Yes, I agree. Um, but what narcissism is when it's unhealthy is it's a, like a pathological, like a lack where you fundamentally don't know how to be a person mm. without getting other people's insight constantly. And you affecting other people is the only way that you feel like you have an ego at all. Mm -hmm. And it's like that. So it, it, it causes you to impulsively have this interaction with other people that could potentially be harmful with them. Mm. So when you're talking about like healthy narcissism, you're not talking about having an impulsive, like I mean, an impulsive manipulation routine no. with people. You're, you're talking about something that's like completely healthy, you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, I think I think it's in the evidence that it is healthy. So I look at my life and I always ask myself like, oh, am I engaging in like toxic behavior? And I just look at my life. How am I doing daily? How are my triggers? How is my health doing? How's everything doing? Why do I meditate? Why do I go into seclusion? Actually, in my 20s, and I talk about this all the time, I spent my 20s like always out of the house, always socializing, trying to find myself. So I gave the impression to the world that I was like this person naturally when I'm actually just quite introvert. I'm a YouTuber. I just want to be at home. I don't want to leave the house. If I wanted to leave the house, I wouldn't have been a YouTuber. Like, you know what I mean? But because I left the house so much in my 20s, everyone thought that's who I was going to be forever. Then I turned 30, found myself, like really felt like, okay, now we know who the foundation of Britney is as a consciousness. Got it. I got enough input from the world. I've got a foundation. Thank you. And then that person secluded herself into a forest. And now this person is like living in Croatia, never leaving her home, except like to do fun stuff, which is 
going to the supermarket and getting bread. Everybody slow down. Okay, like that's the fun stuff. Buying dessert, like splurging on food. Oh, like that that's... sounds like that sounds like a Britney version of BDSM for me. <laughs> Let's go. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You were saying like getting shit accomplished or yeah, something. Yeah, oh, like that's it. true. Like, yeah, getting shit. Yeah, yeah okay, you that's get, true. Yeah, you get that grocery list. That's true. It's like, yeah, I get to like reward myself with like, oh, okay, okay. So, okay. So that's like, that's what, I, but now even people, like I'm in my, like my research era. I'm going to be here till I think I'm in my, 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 my maybe early mid forties where I'm like, I just want to know information and consume and listen to audiobooks and hang out on YouTube and do my thing. But everyone's like, when are you going to meet us here? When are you going to party with us here but i'm like Shh, that britney has died we're in my 30s britney that britney's not doing that and everyone's like you've changed and i was like e exactly but what i'm reverting back to is the foundation of me that always existed i feel like my whole life i was really awesome as a kid like i knew myself but because i got so much input that was difficult for me to process i lost myself and other people's expectations of me and then found myself again at 30 and now i'm reminding everybody that i'm not changing in a negative way, I'm reverting back to that pure self I had as a child that was just interested in people. Ever since I was a child, I was interested in people. I would like go up to adults and be like, so why are you fat? Like you're pretty big, right? And my mom would be like, you can't ask people these questions. I was like, I just want to know. It's interesting. Isn't it interesting? And I think that's my neurodivergency as well, to be fair. Like I, I really do think my bluntness is a part of my inability to care about social cues in some way even though i know they exist i'm not i know they exist i am self-aware i just ignore them like i'm like i shouldn't do this right now but if i don't do it they i'm suck. gonna be huh they suck they're annoying they're annoying well they're so, there to like, keep so society going in a way right yeah yeah and they're not they're there for like even in croatia like people one don't make eye contact here oh my god i'm such an american i'm all like and my partner's like, stop, you're confusing people. And I was like, oh, like in Croatia, people mind their own business. They keep walking. They don't make a lot of eye contact or talk to each other. So I definitely like I'm OK adapting in that way. But if I was curious, I might go up to somebody and be like, excuse me, I don't mean to bother you. But and I usually do. Even in America, I would preface, you know what I mean? If I'm going to be weird, I need to own the weirdness and comfort them in my weirdness. The dilemma is when you have going back to the very socially awkward autists, you have the people that don't and will not recognize they're the weird ones. And then they invoke their weirdness onto other people. And then other people are like, you can't do this. And they're like, it's just who I am. Yeah, but who you are is weird. So until you own your weird, you're, you know what I mean? You're not going to give people you the safety. You can be weird. You can you are, be weird. Absolutely, you just have you to can know be weird. weird. You just have to own it. And people don't want to because they, they want to, they feel normal inside, which you are. I feel very normal. I feel very typical. But I'm obviously like, you know. And that's the problem. Also, mm -hmm. also, part of me is like, you know, also, fuck it, dude. Like, that suck. Like, you no, know, you should be able to just feel like. Uh, uh, yeah, what, for sure. Uh, what, would, what would a. So, uh, what in every. This is like a Zizekian mm -hmm. uh, thought, but like in every society, in every culture, like, we'll have to end this eventually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, in every society, there is a different set of mores and everything. Um, and when you're over in Croatia, there's a different set of, but so like you learned to do how to default behave in certain ways without thinking about it. But now there's a totally different set and you feel alien to it. Well, what would a human look like without any of those sets? I don't mm. think we could ever know. Um, probably not because we evolved over time to like create these tribes and these like communities that have expectation of behavior because we're herd animals. So there is that. So I think there isn't really, I, I think we're too smart as a species to be wild because being wild is like inefficient for our safety, you know? So I, I think I would argue that our biology is probably really smart and not letting us be without the construct in the construct we create for our own safety. Right. But I would say if you meditate yeah. and if you really like vibe with the universe, I think you get close to like living in the ultimate present, like the ultimate present, like Smith, like the ultimate, like I can like hear my breathing and focus on everything in this moment. And it just lasts for like a second. Cause I'm not that great at it, but like, when I feel like I'm evoking it, I'm almost saying like I'm just a part of the painting. It's almost like I forget that I'm a Britney, but I'm a part of the painting and it's not very human. It's too far from the construct, which keeps us safe. It's like too weird in a way. So I think a human without that expectation of behavior is just like not human, even though it's human. It's just like, does that make sense or no? Is that too woo woo? Well, um, yeah, but I, 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 I personally, I don't, I see what a lot of what you're saying there is like disassociative. No, not disassociative. The opposite. Extreme presence. 
not disasso- when you disassociate as somebody who did it all through her life when you disassociate you are denying reality you are escaping the present when okay. you are living in the present in a meditative philosophy way you are going so into the present you are the most alive you are not allowed to deny reality you are in the most reality which is just like acknowledging that like it's like It's not living in the past or the present, right? Like right now you're thinking about the future, right? I have to pee. I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about the fact that you have a stream later. I'm thinking about all the arguments you might make. I'm thinking about watching it later. I'm thinking about all the things all at the same time. I'm thinking about my partner. He's making noise in the background. I can hear him. But it's like not any of those things. It's like being a part of it, like like a speck in the wind or like a leaf in the wind, like the leaf is just leafing. And it's like, what if I was the leaf, right? It's not disassociative. Disassociation is to escape reality. But that's why we have meditation practices. That's why we like go into the forest and meditate. It's why people go on monk retreats. It's why people go because it's a it's a, like a practice. You have to practice this tool to actually do it in the first place. I don't I don't know. I'm skeptical. Sure, of course. I'm a two or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> You're on a journey, bro. Yeah. How are your spoons? Would you like to cut off the convo pretty soon here? My, my spoons are my spoons are fine. Um, I'm honestly concerned about your spoons, mm. but um, I think we've gone through a bunch of different things, and yeah. I think is like we have to sort of wrap it up. Like, like we can have more talks at a different time or For something. For sure. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with uh, that. My bladder is so full right now. I would love to take a break and pee. So you gotta stick a spoon in spoon in the bladder. Or, I, I don't know. Like. Mm. A, okay <laughs> so okay anything else then anything else before we say goodbye um no okay good convo i really appreciate it it was good all right yeah. uh, nice talking to you talk bye. to you soon bye in my head in real life while i'm dead my belly's being fed and i'm okay i'm just fine yet all i do is whine not to you in my mind because i I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool